the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom So we are picking up anchor here in Deltaville and we're going to be sailing to Smith Island but right now in the summer there's wind in the morning no wind in the afternoon which means that we need to make the most of the wind of the morning which means that it's 6 a.m. and we're pulling up anchor because we have about a six hour run we don't have reservations at Smith uh, it's not a very popular spot and there's three different marinas you can pull into there's nowhere to anchor so we're just gonna try our luck and see what happens We're sailing along at five and a half to six knots. It's just, it's gorgeous. Beautiful wind. The wind's supposed to be here till the afternoon and we're slated to be arriving at about one. Let's turn off regen and get some more speed out of this. Oh, so a lot of people tout regen as being an amazing thing for an electric motor. And yes, but as with everything, it has its time and place. So regen is amazing offshore. For coastal hopping, it's pretty worthless. It's just drag. You really don't want to have, if you have regen, you don't even want to use it if you're coastal. So what happens is when you're motoring along, you're motoring at somewhere between 20 to 40 amps. That's fine. That's, that's going to push you along at a comfortable speed of two to four knots, somewhere in that range. If you turn on your regen, you're going to be producing maybe one to four amps, somewhere in that range. So if you motor for an hour at 20 amps, you just burned 20 amp hours. You turn on your regen for the next two hours and you produce a whopping two to eight amp hours. It's not even half of what you burned in an hour. So, so that's the whole issue. You can't motor out, sail a little bit, and then have full charge to motor back in. You have a negligible amount of charge added. If you're out in the ocean, you're doing regen for the next 24 hours, and you're producing between one to four amps, you're talking 24 to 96 amp hours. Now that is a sizable amount. And if you're gonna do a weak passage, you know, you're gonna arrive and you're gonna have plenty of power in your motor bank to motor into the next harbor and plenty of power to keep your fridge and your lights on and all that stuff. So that's, that's the thing with regen. So in the Chesapeake, we're gonna be sailing for about five to six hours today. I'd rather get an extra knot, knot and a half, by having regen turned off, then go a knot or knot and a half slower and produce, eh, maybe, you know, six amp hours. It's, it's really not worth the, the drag. So if you're looking at outboards, like an electric outboard, really, seriously, do not consider one with regen. Like, don't make that the reason that you buy that outboard because, I mean, that is a total waste. The drag that that sucker would put on you is nowhere near worth it. So just get some more solar panels, charge up with the sun, it, it's drag free, and just sail along faster, get to your next anchorage, and enjoy. This is one of the beautiful things about AIS. So there's a tugboat way over there, pretty far away. 
he's a tug pushing a huge barge, so he can't really maneuver much. So it doesn't matter if I have right of way or not. If I get hit because he physically can't turn to not hit me, that's on me. So it's nice to be able to look and see, do I need to worry about this or not? So on AIS, you just go into the app and it shows you that guy and it says we're gonna be passing with 0.7 miles between us. But the more important part is it tells us that when we pass, I'll be ahead of him, he's gonna pass in my stern and it'll be in about 10 minutes. That's, that just takes all the stress out of it. And when we're out in the ocean at night and you see nav lights off in the distance, you don't know how far they are, how fast it's going, nothing. AIS tells you everything. Well, so that's one of the kinds of buoys that have a whistle in it. So the whistle is actually powered by the motion of the water making the buoy bob around and then it makes that whistle sound. So they're really cool, but they tell you two things. This area is subject to fog, which is why they have a sound signal device. And the second thing, it better be moving, otherwise it's quiet. <laughs> so if you're ever out here and it's foggy and super calm, you can't hear the buoy. <laughs> I'm not saying that Maddie scares the wind away, but every time Maddie comes out, the wind dies down. And then we slow down. Our average speed was 5.9. Maddie came out, and now we're going 3.8. All right, our speed just dropped a little too low. Luckily, we have a sail for that. It's a little bit of work to get him set up, but Dill is made for light winds. He's a drifter. We haven't gotten him out in a really long time, not since the ocean. And uh, it's gonna be really fun to have him flying. It's just a bit of work to get him up there. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, crusty Morty hair. As you know, today we're headed to Smith Island. This island has some historic significance in the Chesapeake Bay. It was actually charted in the 1600s by John Smith. Yes, the same John Smith from the famous story of Pocahontas. He was the one who came into the Chesapeake Bay and charted a lot of this area. And so Smith Island is named for him. So in the 1600s, it became inhabited by settlers from Dorset, England, Wales, and Cornwall. And so it's actually, since it's such an insular island, it's the only island in Maryland that is not accessible by car. So you have to get there by ferry. And it's so closed off that it actually preserved the language, the dialect, from those original settlers that came in the 1600s. So the population reached its peak of 800 in the, in the 1900s, but now it's down to about 220 people. So it's actually sinking, unfortunately. It's a sad story with water levels rising and with great, great levels of erosion. Uh, the island's only expected to last until 2100. So by 2100, it's gonna be completely eroded away. It's gonna be a big loss, big historic loss for Maryland. So we're especially excited to go to Smith Island because it's new territory for us. We went to Tangier, which is a very similar island with a similar story. It's in Virginia um, on our way out of the Chesapeake, but this time we're going to Smith Island for the very first time. I'm excited to see it. So Dill, our drifter, is made out of spinnaker cloth, but he's a drifter, which means he's basically a spinnaker, but he's stayed and cut like a Genoa. So we're passing Tangier right now, which is the kind of Smith Island equivalent down here in Virginia. And uh, it's neat to be passing by it. We're not stopping there this time because we stopped there last time. And 
it's the kind of place where if you've seen it once, you know, you're you're satiated. That's all you really need to do. But I do recommend going because it's a really unique experience to see these islands. They're just kind of frozen in time. And if you don't ever want to go, but you want to know a little more about Tangier, uh, we'll link to our Tangier video down in the description of this video. Um, it's an old one, so the editing is not, you'll have to forgive my editing, but uh, I think it still holds up as an interesting episode. So check that out if you want to see Tangier. That right there was the Maryland-Virginia line. We just crossed into Maryland. How do you feel about being back in Maryland after five years? Oh, it's incredible. It's just, the boat is completely different from the boat that sailed out of here five years ago as is the crew. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a dream to go cruising and sail out into the Atlantic and now we've crossed it, we've gone to places I didn't even know existed. Like it's just, it's been absolutely amazing. It, there's, there really is something magical about traveling by boat and it takes you to the same places you can get to by plane but you see them in such a different way. Yes, when we left Maryland five years ago we had plans to go to the Azores, Puerto Rico, and back. We had no idea what was actually in store for us. And so to return, having been to sailing through four continents and coming back, having accomplished everything that we have, so much more than we had originally expected or thought we were able to do. It just, it's a feeling of immense pride and mixed with a little bit of sadness, but also great excitement for what's to come next. And if you're wondering what's next, it's a whole boatload of boat work. We're gonna be rebuilding our Auberg 30 and building it to be the perfect dream cruiser with everything that you actually need to go cruising and blue water cruising. And we're gonna do it on a tiny, tight little budget because we don't have a lot of money. It's basically taking an abandoned boat and turning it into a full-fledged ocean cruising boat for as little money as possible. A total budget re refit. And we're gonna be adding the synthetic rigging, taking you through it step by step. We're gonna be putting in an electric motor. We're gonna be doing so much exciting things to this boat and I can't wait to take you along the way. So we have some incredible things planned for our near future. Once we finish that boat, we'll be cruising on it. We'll take it to Bermuda to prove that everything we did was successful. <laughs> so if you're on a tight budget and wanna go cruising, these coming videos are going to show you how you can do that using as little money as possible so that you can enjoy your cruising experience earlier than you may have thought.
something that matters, matters to me. But what do you want? What's your biggest need? Every hour we spend together, and suddenly the chances are small, just like the lottery. Just hope we could stay together. We wait and see. But the chances are small, just like the water. This feels a whole lot like being on the ocean. So, yeah, Maddie's cooking, Wendy's steering, we're sailing. So the Chesapeake is infamous for squalls, and we've got our first Chesapeake squall coming at us right now. Okay, we made it in the Solomons. We're here, we're tied up. And they brought me to their boat to take a look at their sails after the massive journey that they have put them through. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. I can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas. <laughs>